Alexander McCook and I built this model of the Latigue monorail for, originally built it for an online competition of Trainbur um, and then this is its first time at, at a show. So I've been fascinated by this monorail. It ran in Ireland back in the 1890s through the 1930s and it's been fascinated since I saw it a childhood book. I had a photo uh, of this monorail. And then I went over there four years ago, and they were, they've got to build a, a replica of it, which is running there. So when I saw it there, I thought, well, I really need to try to build this in Lego. And so finally, when the train came up, uh, it was a great opportunity to, um, to actually finally get provide inspiration to go and build it. Mm -hmm. so, so what, what was the, the thinking kind of of the building the train here as far as what they were trying to achieve with the monorail design versus a more, I guess, regular looking train? Well, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a, the weirdest railway, really. Yeah. The, the idea of having a single rail. The, uh, got a book where they've reprinted the promotional material from the, so I think, 1880s, when they you know, were trying to promote this. As, it was the next best, the great new thing that was going to come. Um, and they sold it on its simplicity. And they, this is a big marketing thing. And they, they didn't want to talk down conventional railways, they said and then went on to talk down conventional <laughs> railways and explained how simple the monorail was and how much better it was and sort of missing out on th things like needing two boilers for your locomotive and the steps to get from one side of the track to the other and the fact that you couldn't have a level crossing because you had uh, like a, a waist-high monorail track and which made it you know, impossible to get across the rails. So, uh, but other than those little points, you know, clearly simplicity was the great virtue of it. So, yeah, it's an amazing piece of, you know, of design mm -hmm. and it did last for like 30 40 years in Ireland um, but yeah something quite different to build in Lego right exactly so then if we dive deeper into the Lego model here talk about kind of where you started with this and how the design came together uh, well, I started with the locomotive so I was, pick what, I was tossing out whether to try to do it at a mini fig scale or go to a bigger scale to try to get more detail in so it's sort of a big a slightly sort of large mini fig scale perhaps about 10% bigger than, than other conventional train models that I've done, but still, still within the range of minifig scale. Uh, so I started off with the locomotive, um, working out how to do the boilers you know, on each side of the track. Um, played around with the ideas for the track. So I ended up with the Emmy models rails okay. for the top, which provide a nice smooth running surface and then using tiles on the side for the guide rails that it has. So each carriage, there's a... Uh, there's wheels on the, the actual running wheels that sit on top of the monorail track and then there's the small guide wheels that run along the, along the side rails to keep it stable. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, the plan is to actually have this motorised and running on a larger layout at some point. So we're going to have a motor in the, there's a motor in the first carriage sort of crammed in there. So in there we've actually got a large logo motor in there using a gear, gear and chain drive to the wheels. And then this carriage is going to have the, the battery, there'll be the IR tucked in there and then the, the Lego battery pack. So it's probably going to be a few, few little teething issues with actually getting it to run reliably, but hopefully we'll be able to get a, a decent sized layout and actually have it running around at a future show. Yeah, yeah, with the, the very unusual looking track there as well. Yes. So then talk about some of the other designs here on the train because obviously some of these cars don't look like a normal uh, kind of train car design. So yeah, so they had to have these staircases built in. So they they on the end of the carriages or they had a separate staircase. Um, so the, you actually had to have your people, well, obviously you can't cross from one side of the train to the other because you've got the track down the middle. So, so apparently what would happen is when the train came into the station, all the people would get on on one side and then the staff would have to run around trying to persuade them all to get over the other side. And then at the last minute, some really heavy guy would turn up and sit on, them, on one side, and then they'd have to get all, uh, everyone else out to go over the other side to balance it. So it did sound like a bit of a mess, really. But anyway, I mean, it sort of worked. And it did run, as I said, for quite a few years. And they carried livestock, so 
there's the um, oft-repeated story about the cows. So the farmer wants to get his cow to market, but of course you have to have a balanced load. So he ha borrows his neighbour's cow to balance the load, takes his cow to market, sells it, wants to get home, uh, and then he has to get his neighbour's cow back home. So he has to borrow another cow to get that home. I feel like that's just an unending loop there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently not, I mean, not actually a true story. The, um, apparently the railway was most indignant when they heard this story and um, you know, they did actually carry livestock and they were most annoyed about it, but the story has gone down in folklore and mm -hmm. um, kind of stuck. <laughs> exactly. And then you also have some landscaping along here. So talk about kind of how you did that and what you wanted to kind of add to the train display with that. Uh, well, really, this was uh, that was actually a very last-minute build. Uh, that was like a couple of days ago, uh, sticking that together. Uh, so that obviously, there will be more, a lot more landscaping once I do a full layout. And there's a few, some other interesting features. They had some really weird points. To, uh, so obviously, changing tracks, you can't just have a conventional, you know, switch rail. So they actually had a, had almost like rotating turntables, uh, except they're curved rather than straight like a normal railway turntable to change tracks, so I want to build some of those. And then the, for crossing, for cars to get across the tracks, they had, had actually a sort of drawbridge system where the, draw, the two, two flaps that would, would lower down onto the rail to let the, um, let the cars or horse and carts go across. So there's a few things that I can hopefully yet add once we've got a bit more space. For sure. Well, this is a fascinating history here of this train, and thanks so much for, for bringing to the show and building this, because I think it's a, a very unique build here. I can't say I've ever really seen a, another train like this, so I think it's a really special build. And I want to mention you also got a commendation award here at the show, so congratulations for that as well. Thank you.